Howdy and welcome to another postcard from Moorhead. I'm Larry Dixon and we're not turning on the stove, we're not the oven or the griddle today. What are we doing? We are doing old fashioned funeral sandwiches. The topic today is funeral sandwiches. Now growing up in uh, your area here in Carter County, Rowan County, what was, what was a funeral sandwich? Well a funeral sandwich was an easy to make easy to assemble, easy to transport food item that was taken by neighbors and friends to the home of a person who had recently passed away. This was done to uh, make food preparation for the family much easier. Uh, they had enough on their minds with the loss of a family member and it was a way that neighbors had of taking some of the burden of a time of grieving uh, off of the family. What makes it old-fashioned? You see, like this is an old-fashioned, what I call old-fashioned funeral sandwich, because that's what I grew up with. But what is old-fashioned? I think probably more than anything else, old-fashioned has to do with being simple. Simple ingredients, just a few different things, uh, simple preparation technique. You just grind it all up, chop it all up, throw it in a big bowl and stir it up. You moisten it with uh, enough Miracle Whip or enough mayonnaise to make it spreadable. You put it between two slices of plain white bread, none of this fancy whole grain stuff, and uh, you're in business. Old fashioned to me is, is simple. Old, old fashioned to me <clears throat> Uh, kind of goes back to when you were born. You know, how far back? What is how far back is old fashioned for me? I was born in the early fifties, so old fashioned to me would have been what my grandparents made. Yeah. You know, I've done a little research in, in preparation for this. Uh, now, where I grew up, a funeral sandwich was a bologna salad sandwich. Mm -hmm. That was generally what a funeral sandwich was. And in my research, I, uh, if you Google funeral sandwich, you'll come up with ham and cheese on a Hawaiian roll. <laughs> that would not have been from around here. That would not have been from around here. In the 30s, they did not have this mixer grinder machine. But we do, so we're throwing in a few modern ideas and concepts and tools. So the first thing let's do, let's go ahead and put our bologna in the, oh wait a minute, I have to take this little ring off of there. Not a problem. We have our bologna with the, the rind off of it and it's in this blender. So, I'm going to show you the consistency that we're looking for, and we're going to pulse this, and let's see what we get. All right. Let's see if I can get this apart, and I'll show you. This is this is what we're looking for for our bologna salad. Absolutely, looks good. Looks perfect. Now, what I'm going to do next, of course, like I said, they did not have these blenders back in the old days. So I'm going to put the lid back on. I'm going to start it, turn it on, and I'm going to add the eggs and let the blender pop up the eggs. There we go. All right. So now, the next thing we need is a mixing bowl. Like I said, we're not using an oven, a griddle, stove top. We're doing it the old fashioned way as close as we can. As you can see, this is the texture we're looking for with our bologna. So let's get it out. Now you'll see some of these measurements are not exact, 
Because how did they do it in the, in the old days? They did it by eye and by taste. So that's what we're going to try to do is, is replicate that. And we're going to mix up We've got an egg in there, or bologna. What we're going to add next, we're going to add our sweet relish. That's a half a cup. We may need to add more. Like I say, it is according to one person's taste, the person that's making it. But this is starting to look pretty good. Next, we're going to add our cheese. One cup of sharp cheddar cheese. Oh, wait a minute, our Miracle Whip. Now the Miracle Whip, I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. In this recipe, we used, or I used, Miracle Whip rather than mayo. And so, and a lot of people in these videos, they like the history of where certain foods and stuff came from. Well, Miracle Whip came about in the 1933, it was introduced to the public at the Chicago World Fair. And the reason it was so popular, it was cheaper than mayonnaise. That's the way it was advertised. And at one point, it outsold every other brand of mayonnaise. Hmm. Miracle Whip, the craft company, had their own uh, radio show. And in that radio show, they had uh, people such as Dinah Shore, uh, Roy Rogers, and Dale Evans performed on their show. So they did a lot to promote Miracle Whip. Let's, let's give us a taste here, all J.D. Right. I'm all for that. Now the recipe that you saw me while I was putting this together, that's the starting point. If you want more cheese, you can add it. If you want uh, more sweet relish, you can add it. Onion, you can add onion to it, which I don't have onion in this because raw onions sometimes give me a migraine headache. Uh, you can also put celery in it. But the ingredients that you saw me put together uh, is what I grew up with. It had onion in it then, but uh, I left the onion out today. And let's see what we've got. No salt. Do not add salt to this recipe because the bologna has quite a bit of salt in it. Now, for my particular taste bud, I'm going to add another spoonful of sweet relish. One more big gob of sweet relish. That is what I call perfection. One half cup of sweet relish, four boiled, hard boiled eggs, a half cup of Miracle Whip, one cup of sharp cheddar, you can put some black pepper in it, and you can put some onions in it, up to you. you know, this, this is a, uh, a funeral sandwich. What other foods would have been brought into a funeral? <clears throat> funeral beans. It was a variation on baked beans with some ground beef in it. Uh, other kinds of things that would typically be brought to the homes of friends when there was a need at funeral time would have been just about any sort of casserole. Uh, macaroni salad would have been popular. Uh, always some sort of dessert. I think in this particular culture the feeling was that people feel better if they have something sweet to eat. <clears throat> so desserts would be popular. 
an old-fashioned apple stack cake or whatever one's particular cake specialty was that would always be welcome as funeral food. What about fried chicken? Oh, sure. Lots of fried chicken. Uh, so, you know, when we think about, you know, funeral sandwich, funeral foods, this is the ultimate comfort food. It's, it's brought in to comfort the family in their time of need, in their time of sadness. Now, going back to the, the 40s and the 50s and even before that, funeral homes did not have a chapel. No. So what, what did they do with the body? Well, typically in rural areas in eastern Kentucky, both uh, in Knott County where you grew up and here uh, where I grew up and in the adjacent county to the east, Carter County, where both my parents were from, the body was uh, prepared for the funeral and burial at a funeral home sometimes. It took a long time for that idea to catch on. If you go back far enough, it was simply a matter of the family taking care of that themselves. Embalming was not practiced until fairly late. The body remained at home, cared for by family and neighbors. Uh, it remained home for what we would today call visitation. Back then, folks just dropped in and they were no, in no hurry to leave. Uh, it wasn't a matter of a, a brief popping in to sign a book and say hello and then make a hasty exit. People stayed for a long time. And there were people who were assigned the responsibility of staying overnight if need be because the body of the deceased loved one was not to be left alone. That was considered the height of rude, improper behavior. If we look back historically, you know, there were various reasons for sitting up. One, it was the custom. What were some other reasons that they might want to sit up with the body all night? I think it was all related to the culture of neighborliness and hospitality. When people are in trouble, you don't abandon them. You don't leave them alone. You stay with them in case they need something. Specifically, the idea of not leaving a dead body could have had a connection to old, old folk beliefs from our ancient Irish and Scottish ancestors about keeping evil spirits away from the body that might want to come and snatch the, the soul away. There was the thought at the time that the soul didn't depart from the body immediately after death. It lingered. And this was a way of posting a guard, so to speak. Well, we have sat here and we've discussed and talked about funeral sandwiches and uh, funeral customs. So, this has been a postcard from Moorhead. I'm Larry Dixon, and with me is J.D. Reader. J.D., how was the bologna salad, or the funeral sandwich? The bologna salad, which is the heart of the funeral sandwich, uh, was very good. I think anybody who had a growing up experience with this delicacy would consider that to be a fine example of what a funeral sandwich ought to be. Well, thank you. Like I said, this has been a postcard from Moorhead. I'm Larry Dixon. With me is J.D. Reader, and uh, we'll see you down the road.